Hey guys, welcome back to Saturday Night at the Well, your favorite place to be. I like it more each week. Um, hey, how are you? I hope you guys are doing good. I hope classes are going well. I think most of you are probably doing school online, doing distance learning shenanigans, but um, yeah, we're praying for you. You know it's not easy. Although, we had one student say, oh gosh, it's way easier. I can just roll out of bed and go to class and it ends earlier than it normally would. I'm like, okay, way to, way to find that silver lining. We like it. We're here for it. Um, quick announcement. Tomorrow is the final day uh, that you can give to our fire relief fundraiser. Um, only 24 hours left. So uh, yeah, we would love to have you join us in that work. We're collecting donations. We're gonna send them off to the Red Cross because they're already doing some awesome work on the front lines. They got boots on the ground, doing all the hard work of um, supporting fire victims, supporting first responders. So um, yeah, go ahead and uh, join us in that, why don't you? You're welcome. Okay, so we, you guys, we're like six months, here in California, we're like six months into like uh, quarantine, lockdown, lifestyle, new normal, blah, blah, blah. And um, that's kind of a long time. <laughs> I feel like that's like a, like a marker, like a milestone maybe needs to be commemorated with cupcakes. I don't know. I feel like we could all use some chocolate in our lives. Um, my favorite thing that's been said about this COVID season is like, you know, this pandemic's really given a lot of people the chance to slow down and um, reevaluate their priorities and take care of their mental health and deal with some like mental, spiritual things that have been happening. And basically everybody was like, nah, I'm gonna learn how to make bread. <laughs> I just thought that was so funny because like nobody wants to do the hard work, you know, taking care of what's going on, but they're gonna learn to make bread. So anyway, I just thought that was funny. I'll share that with you. So. Um, the other day I was making some bread and, um, this is like a really cheesy, maybe, maybe it's great. I'll be confident, um, way to, to think of, of bread anyway. So if you don't know anything about bread, uh, let me tell you a little bit about bread. I'm no expert, but I did go to pastry school, so I love baking and stuff. Um, so bread, the thing that I like about bread is it's, it's kind of like therapeutic. You, you get to kind of rough it up and manhandle it a little bit cause you have to knead it. Cause when you mix water, here's some science for you. When you mix water with the flour, it kind of activates this protein within the flour. It's called gluten. And um, the more you like work that mixture and, and knead it and fold it and stretch it and stuff, the more it builds up this gluten, which is basically what makes bread chewy versus like cake, which is soft. You guys are learning so much right now. Are you glad you're here? Um, but good bread, it rests in between these like, you knead it for a while and then it rests and then you knead it for a while and it rests. And what that does is it, um, it gives structure and strength to the bread so that when you put it in the fire, in the oven, right, in, in the heat, um, it rises and it does, it turns into this beautiful thing that everybody can enjoy, okay? Um, and I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> isn't our spiritual life so much like that. I mean, right? You're learning about baking. We learned about gardening a while back. So rewind with me to that whole gardening series where we talked about how Jesus is the vine and God is the gardener, right? Um, we go through periods of life. Life is not, is not a straight line, right? It's not static. We, we go through ups and downs and we go backwards sometimes and we go in dizzying circles. Um, so there's peaks and there's valleys and in those valleys, we find struggles and trials and temptations and just hard circumstances. That's like the nicest way to put it. And it's in those moments, in those valleys where opportunity kind of lives for God to mold us and change us into something new, right? Um, 
And so if we'll go back to the bread. If, if those moments where we're like being kneaded and stretched and folded and rolled and kind of worked, worked on, um, that's what, that's the thing that later on, when we do go through a trial or a temptation or a hard thing, that's what gives us the strength we need, the structure we need to withstand that. And not to just withstand it, but to to thrive in that and come out of it the other side even better. Does that make sense, you guys? This is such like a random thought that came to me, but I wanted to share it with you. Um, it reminded me of that scripture in James. James is an awesome book in the Bible, by the way. If you've never read it before, you should do that. Like now, maybe not right now, maybe like in a few minutes, you know, when we're done here, but go grab your Bibles and read it. Um, and like right from the get go, James, you read it and you're like, why would you say something so controversial, something so brave yet controversial? <laughs> um, so yeah, James chapter one, verse two, first thing he says is, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, not if, when. When troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So, oh, James, thank you for loving us. So right away, we see this statement that's like, hey, guys, when bad things happen, when difficult circumstances, when inconveniences, when discomfort, when pain, when trials of many kinds, and there are many of them in life, when they come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. I don't know about you. That is not my natural reaction to being tried and tested. It's, it is not my natural reaction. I don't think that's human nature, you know, to like, oh my gosh, what a hard, uncomfortable thing I'm in. I'm so happy about this. It's not natural. And I think that's why James has to tell us about it because we need to take a new perspective. Okay. So second Corinthians says that when we are in Jesus, when we follow Jesus, we are a new creation. Not just new, like I bought a new pair of jeans, but prototype new. There's not, never been anyone or anything like me in history before. Brand spanking new, okay? And so we need a new perspective to go with that new person that we are. We need to, to completely transform the way we look at life and look at people. We need it, It's all totally new. And so this new perspective that we have to take on our trials and our temptations and our hard circumstances is to consider it pure joy. Complete opposite of what we normally do. Totally opposite to our nature because it's God's nature. Okay. So consider it pure joy when you when you face trials of many kinds, because it's going to grow our endurance. Some, some translations say perseverance. So what is per perseverance? What is, what is endurance? It's the ability to uh, go through difficult things, to withstand difficult things and come through on the other side. So what is this saying to us? What is this verse saying? It's saying that each time you come up against a mountain. Each time you come up against something hard, something that you think might be impossible to surmount, consider it a really awesome opportunity. Be happy about it because it's an awesome opportunity to grow your endurance. And then it goes on to say, when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. The more endurance we build up in ourselves, the more we allow God to walk us through trials, the closer we come to becoming perfect like Jesus. That, that is one of our goals 
as followers of Jesus, right? Is that we would constantly, through God's help, obviously, because we can't do it ourselves, but constantly be moving toward being more and more like him all the time, more and more every day, a reflection of who Jesus is, living lives that look like his life, doing what he did, loving the way he loved, um, thinking the way he thought, having closeness with God like he has. And so when we when we allow God to walk us through these trials, through these hard times, our endurance grows so that the next trial that comes along, we're even more equipped to walk through that one and we can handle bigger trials. And the more that we do that, the closer we become to being like Jesus. That is awesome. I take back my comment, James. Um, but I mean, obviously, like I said, this is, this is not in our nature to just embrace discomfort, especially I think, um, no, that's controversial, especially I think as Americans, I think some of us have, a, an extremely low tolerance for discomfort, right? Um, I mean, th I'm looking around at the circumstances that we're in, not only are we in the middle of a pandemic, but we're also experiencing fires up and down the state and there's smoke and we're in our homes because of the virus, but also because of the smoke and we can't breathe and we can't go outside and da, 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 da. And, um, like we might be able to handle one or two things on at a time, but throwing all that at us, it's, it's a lot. It is a lot and that's okay if it's a lot. Um, it's certainly not been easy. I mean, I'll be honest. It's not been easy for me. It's causing me uh, a lot of discomfort, a lot of anxiety. Um, but I now don't have to freak out because it's hard for me. I can say, oh, wow, this is hard for me. And this is good. This is, <laughs> this is good because it's an opportunity for me to grow. It is an opportunity for me to invite God into this process, to listen to the Holy Spirit when he's trying to change me from the inside out, trying to change my perspective, change the way that I see things, change the way that I deal with things so that my endurance can grow, so that I can handle this with his help. Because the next thing that comes, I'll be even more equipped to handle that. And that's awesome. It really is. Like at the end of the day, is it easy? Heck no. But it's worth it. It is definitely worth it. Um, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, that was my, you know, those were my bread making thoughts that I just wanted to share with you guys. Um, so hopefully, hopefully this week you take time to pause and to sit with God and, um, you know, be honest with him. He already knows you can't hide it from him. Be honest with him about what hard things, what, what things in your life are hard for you right now. He wants to hear it from you because he loves you. He wants to have that relationship with you. So go and be with him and tell him, man, this really stinks. This is really hard because of this and this God. I feel like this when that happens, da, 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 da. And then just be quiet which I know can be hard, but be quiet and listen to his voice and what he has to say about it. Ask him to show you where he's trying to grow you, how he wants to do that, what do you need to do in that process? And uh, tell me if you don't feel more peaceful after that, because if there's anybody I wanna let work on me and influence me and change me and put me through the ringer, it's God. <laughs> that's lame sounds lame but it's it is true he's the only person he's the only one who is trustworthy in that process he's the only one who is faithful a hundred percent of the time so don't be afraid of the hard things don't be afraid of the trials because God wants to do something good in them and I, I say that fully admitting I don't know what your circumstances are but that's how confident I am in my God. I, I trust that whatever you're coming up against, whatever you're going through right now, he wants to be there with you. He wants to build your endurance in that. 
and um, bring you closer to him in that process. Um, yeah, I'll just stop there. Uh, I would love to pray for you. So let's do that, shall we? We shall. Okay. <sighs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for trials. We don't like the discomfort. We don't like change. We don't like loss, God. We don't like pain. But we decide right now, Lord, to surrender it all to you and to trust you, to trust what you are doing in the process, to trust the transformation that you want to bring about in our hearts and in our spirits, God. We welcome you into that. God, may we all have the courage to stop avoiding the process. May we stop avoiding the process. May we fully enter in to the work that you are doing. Years from now, when people ask what we did in this pandemic, <laughs> would we not just list off a, a, a list of Netflix shows that we watched, God, but may we have a bigger story to tell. May we have a a bigger story to tell and a, a brand new perspective and a brand new identity that is firmly founded in you. God, we thank you that you are faithful, that you are the person that we can trust with our, with our hard stuff, that you don't judge us for it, and that you just want to love us through it, God. We are so grateful. We're so grateful for your faithfulness. We're grateful for your love, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. Amen. Okay, guys. Well, I don't know about you. I'm going to go make some more bread. But um, yeah, I, I hope you find some quiet time this week to spend with him. And I hope you are brave enough to jump in to whatever he's calling you to and um, to find some way to laugh in the face of the hard things you're, you're coming up against. Okay, we are praying for you. We love you. And we will see you next week here at the well, all right? Bye.